Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Paul Volman. We'll be discussing his fantastic book, Still Standing, A Personal Journey to Find the Heart of God and to Restore Mine. Available for purchase through Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, directly through the publishing company, AuthorReputationPress.com. But if you guys want to gather everything that Paul has to offer, well, do yourself a favor and head directly to his personal site, StillStandingMinistries.com. There, not only will you find more information on Paul himself, you'll find more information on this fantastic book, Still Standing, as well as find hyperlinks set up to take you to the purchasing page. So one more time, that's stillstandingministries.com. Paul was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business. And that's author Reputation Press. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, well, make sure you're doing yourself a favor and you're contacting our great friends over at ARP. You can find out more information on them at authorreputationpress.com. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Paul, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction and thank you so much for being a guest. How are you? I'm doing fine and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, we're very much looking forward to this. Paul, I think it goes without saying that your book is incredibly valuable at any day or time of the year, but especially right now, right? Given the adversity that we've all faced within the past two years with this pandemic and the varying degrees of lockdown that we've all experienced, a book of this magnitude could not have come at a better time. Okay, so we're really looking forward to the words of wisdom that we're going to be able to receive from you and how we can implement that into our day to day lives moving forward. Now, before we go into the book, because I know we have so much information to cover there, let's start off by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself and your background, Paul. Well, I grew up, if you have old uh, shows from the 60s and 70s, I grew up in your classical uh, middle uh, class farm family in the prairies. Um, went to church every Sunday, uh, uh, did chores, um, had a hundred cows on our farm and parents worked out. So we worked on the farm right along with them. And, uh, and, and so, you know, those, all those cliches that that, that was, that was me. I mean, mm-hmm. we went to an average church, went to an average, uh, little town school and, and just everything about life was average. So that's that's my beginnings. There you have it. There you have it. Well, as average as it may have been, Paul, it sounds absolutely beautiful. And there's something that's so peaceful and serene about that. So wonderful to hear. Nothing but continued success to you and all of your loved ones around you. And Paul, without further ado, still standing, a personal journey to find the heart of God and to restore mine. Tell us a little bit more about your book. Well, a journey that started back in my childhood uh, became, as as you said in your intro, the the ripples uh, throughout my life. And uh, as I struggled as a child to understand uh, what it meant to be a person of faith, what did it mean, mean to be a Christian, and along the way, something happened and I got lost. It became an act. I had found out how to act like a Christian. You ever meet one of those people? Mm. And uh, and so it wasn't authentic. And so, I, you know, I, I had went through all the steps. I, 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 I was saved as a young boy and baptized and uh, as, a, as a believer and, uh, and, and had done all those things. I honestly really believed, but I never got to that point where I started to actually understand this process that God was doing in my life. And so uh, I started to learn a lot of fakery, you know, how to look good, uh, how how to act in all situations, and how to respond to people the right way. And and so in, over time, that became almost my life is this act. 
um, different times. I'd go through times of renewal and 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 do better for a while, but it was I never ever really got to the bottom of that. Even to the fa- fact that I became a pastor and had all these hidden issues because I, I I couldn't let them out. My goodness, I knew what it was supposed to look like. I knew how I was supposed to act, and so. Really, what the the book becomes is this journey through all of that to become authentic and become real. And as the readers of this book will find out, it's very real. Uh, there are the stories I've tried not to couch much. I've kept it family, kept it PG. But you know, uh, it's it's a, a it's not a pretty picture at times. And uh, and and that was very important to me to do that to be real and it's still very important to do that as, as no one is perfect no one gets perfect uh there was only one person perfect and that was jesus and he had to die for the rest of us so you know um so this whole process is an ongoing thing but that's the basis of the book fantastic you know paul really quick before i go to my next question i love what you said here right because we can all relate I mean, how many of us have been in positions where it's kind of like, listen, there's a there's an entire cliche built around it, right? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah, we, yeah. We've, we've all been yeah. there. We've all been there. And I, I love the fact that you that you took it there and you started there because at least for me, speaking from my own experience, right? Whenever we go to church, right? Whenever we go to any service and you see the pastor, you see the minister, you see whoever is up there that's leading the congregation, how often do we put that person on a pedestal and feel that oh they are you know they ha- they can't do any wrong right they have all the answers they know exactly what line you want to be on right what side of the fence you want to be on and to hear you say that is so refreshing right to know that you as a pastor had you had your own questions you had your own concerns by no means did you have all the answers to and the I questions. I mean I had a lot of hidden parts that were that at times you know I'd keep them under control and other times mm-hmm. it was like they were driving the bus and so uh it, it became a full-time job for me to cover that up and and so wow. my life with all the issues and uh, the issues we're going to talk about is uh, uh, pornography, uh, the self-loathing, uh, the uh, uh, even smoking issue that I kept secret for 20-some years. Uh, you know, uh, some of those things might not seem that serious, but this whole 007, you know, act that I was pulling on became exhausting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, so uh, I, I just pulled, I, you know, pulled pulled the carpet back and and, and said, "Well, here's the dirt." <laughs> there you go. Let's just expose it. Let's just expose it all. You know, Paul. Great segue. Yeah. You know what? I I, I realize that you know one of the biggest fears people have is you know if people really knew me, they wouldn't like me. Mm-hmm. I, I spoke in a kids club, uh, kids uh, camp one time, and there's a whole bunch of little girls, and why I'm speaking to eight and nine year old girls at the end. But I, I said this one thing. I said, which one of you? is worried about what somebody else thinks about what one of you thinks, man, if they really knew me, they wouldn't like me. And you know what? Almost to a hundred percent, the hands went up on these little bodies. They knew something wasn't right. And so it's interesting how fast we picked that up. Again, here on the line with Paul Volman, we're discussing his wonderful book, Still Standing, A Personal Journey to Find the Heart of God and to Restore Mine. Available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, authorreputationpress.com or directly through his personal site stillstandingministries.com Paul, great segue that that you've established talk to us about some of the things that you address in the book some of the obstacles that maybe you yourself faced that you had to hide what did that journey look like and how liberating was it when you finally reached that point talk to our listening audience a little bit more about that please that journey was ugly (laughs) <laughs> I mean, uh, and it was not short. You know, people want an instant cure thing. You know, even the church kind of preaches that. Come up, well, pray, we'll lay hands, and one, two, three, it'll be done. And I think God can do that, but I don't think many times we as people can process it that way. And I had so much damage and so much garbage from all those years of collection, from uh, childhood with uh 
misunderstandings with my father, distant, uh, disciplinary, and uh, uh, not um, emotionally connected with me at all. And, and so I went through all of that, and so I started to picture God that way. And so, you know, every time I thought of God, it was like, man, I'm being taken to, you know, the pastor's office. You know, I'm going to get spanked to principal's office. Mm -hmm. And so my life became about that. I knew I was never going to measure up. I knew I couldn't do it. So we, you know, we started from a kid, you know, I'm sneaking, chewing tobacco and, uh, and playing cards into the house. And, and people will laugh at that now, playing cards. Every house has a playing card. Well, our house didn't. And and so they were taken and thrown into the fiery abyss, and and so there's the first start, and and different things, and 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 then as I go older and older, we I just keep adding to this, and uh, you know a, a, a very uh, a funny mind from a young age, just this whole sexuality thing from way too young. To all of a sudden, the ripple effects of that is as an adult, all of a sudden, there's pornography everywhere. My goodness, what do you do with that? Right. And uh, and so you have those issues. And, and so suddenly you lose not only perspective, but honesty and, and integrity. You know, I wouldn't take a nickel from somebody. If you dropped a $100 bill in front of me, I'd chase you down and go give it back to you. But you know what? I got so I could lie at a drop of a hat to cover. Well, that became a bigger issue than so many others. Mm. And so we just kept on adding and adding and adding. Uh, to the point that, you know, here I am on this journey, and I felt called to be a preacher, and I'd go through times of renewal, and I finally went and got my license. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm pastoring in churches and my last church, I just hit the wall. I couldn't do it anymore. And I, I, I left them saying I needed to learn some things. I was tired of saying prayers I no longer believed. And I, I just had to. And that began a 10-year process of healing. Uh, where I was often very alone. I had uh, no pastoral friends, uh, no people, no supports. Uh, oh. My denomination None of those people knew anything about that. So uh, my poor wife and I, we went and started all over again and uh, had a young family. And uh, like that was a bad 10 years. But, you know, the process that came through was step by step, adding to adding. I needed to change my perspective of God and I needed to change what he thought about me. That mm -hmm. became Hallmark. Once you start breaking down those foundational issues, some of the stuff that you built up before suddenly fall down and you can rebuild. Absolutely. I guess that's it in a nutshell, as close as I can do. <laughs> Paul, that's a very big nutshell. Okay. No, you know, I, I love what you're saying, though. Joking aside, I, I love what you're saying. And again, there's so much value there. And again, another segue that you've established, because the next point that I want to go to, so we, we understand some of the obstacles that you faced, right? And a lot of the questions that you were kind of going over in your head and ultimately where it led you on this 10-year journey. And again, refreshing to hear you say that by no means was this journey easy. Like, guys, you need to know, be prepared for the journey. But just because it's hard work doesn't mean you shy away from it, right? I mean, there is so much value in that journey and in those obstacles that you need to go through. And it may be long. It may seem at time arduous. You know, maybe at times like this is just something that you may not be able to overcome, but I promise you, you can. The strengths of See, God's got to God's got to change some of our thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we get patterns in our mind, scientists will tell us that it's hard to break those. Absolutely. And so you're not just learning new truths; you're learning new thinking processes. Right. And so that becomes a, a different deal. That's you're almost talking the science of drug addiction and different things. You have to reprogram things. So that's why I think a lot of that stuff takes so long. Very yeah, yeah, no, no, Paul, I'm, I'm so glad. Listen, this is a conversation. Please interrupt as often as you'd like. You know, what I love about what you said, and it's a completely other subject, but it follows the same suit. When you're talking about human beings, we are almost like computers in a sense, right? Where we get programmed 
to think and behave in certain ways. Now, just the way that you get programmed to think and behave in a certain way, you can be reprogrammed. It just takes work. It takes time. It takes consistency. And the journey by no means is easy. And we're still, you know, processing and going through every single day. But I can tell you, man, given from where we started to where we are now, it's like night and day. And we can start to see the fruits of our labor coming in. And that has proven to be I would, I would add this to that because it is not just us. When we're talking, of, this is why this book is a relationship, finding the heart of God mm-hmm. and restoring mind, is, is when we find the heart of God, who transforms our thinking? only one God that can transform and renew minds. And so as we get on that process, God's with it. He's Mm -hmm. on the game. And so, you know, and so as we start to open up and start to be able to recognize and see the damage, it's interesting you talked about finance. One of the things I never talked about is I was a a closet uh, compulsive gambler for 20 years. Can you imagine? After out going and hiding someplace so he could gamble, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, the stupid as you can imagine. But there was something in that, whether it was a family thing, and it was. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, another thing, the reprogram. Absolutely. And so, uh, I, and and God did some amazing things. Some of it very quick, and like you said, some of it, like I said before, some of it is is really hard. And the hard stuff really was was to really see myself in a different light. Absolutely. Someone God loved, that is somebody God was just ticked off with. You know, listen, Paul, you would have think we planned it, man, because you just keep setting me up with wonderful segues and we're just knocking them out the park. I love this here. As we start to close out of this fantastic interview, I want to get to that underlying message of your book, because I think that that is so profound, because what we've done so far is, again, we've talked about your life, your experiences, a lot of the obstacles that you've encountered. We've also touched up on, hey, these are these are common things that we as just everyday people encounter the same things. Right. We have similar questions, similar doubts and reservations. Now, I remember speaking to you on the pre-screening call and I asked what I asked you what you thought your underlying message was. And one of the things that you said to me that I'm going to copy you verbatim because it was that profound is every life is redeemable. Right. No matter what your views of God, no one is too far gone. And I love that message of hope and that message of inspiration. And to close out of this fantastic interview, A, I want you to go in a little bit more of elaboration on that, Paul, but also talk to us for anybody that's out there that is going through their own obstacles, that are battling their own demons. How important is it for them to understand and know that you are not too far gone? Your life is redeemable. It is so important, and it's so central to God's Word. I mean, I, I don't know how we get so that God's a thumb-down emperor-ruler type of God when uh, the words of Jesus is, I, I, I didn't come to condemn, I, I come to redeem, to save that which was lost. And, and so when you're, you're talking about a life, and, and so many times we get caught up in things, and we just go down the road so far, and we finally go, you know what, this doesn't matter. I, I, I'm never going to change. You know, that's not God's perspective. And, you know, when we start turning that around and all of a sudden realize that God's in it for the long haul, you know, the picture of Jesus on the cross is not a very pretty picture. But all of a sudden I realized if Jesus is willing to do that for me, what else is he willing to do? Absolutely. So I started to see that my life wasn't too dirty for him. That there was no place that he didn't want to get his hands dirty to help me out, mm-hmm. and and so we started handling problems head on, and and start recognizing that even in the midst, even sometimes in failure, that God was still loving me. What a neat picture! All of a sudden, I fall down and I look up, and there's the Father going, "You can make it, Paul. One more time, one more day. Let's go again. Get up." You know, and, and instead of saying, "Well, you blew it, kid. You're going to hell," right? You know. And so, uh, uh, you know, that's a real process. It's one of the things I like to say is it's, it's, it's about a real relationship with a real God in a, such a way that we are real. Yeah, you know, uh, we're authentic. God knows it anyhow. 
You know, we don't put on our Sunday best to talk to God. We talk to him where we're at. Mm -hmm. And so when we start realizing that he's with that and he wants us to be real and he wants us to know when we're frustrated with him because it's not going fast enough and he wants us to talk that out, suddenly this becomes a joint thing. And this is the idea of finding the heart of God or mine. That's why that second part of that title is so important. Absolutely. So when I started to realize that God and I were a team, that wasn't God looking down at me and saying, get it together. Um, you know, uh, it changed my whole perspective in life. Absolutely. I, listen, guys, I love it. I absolutely love it. And you know what I love even more? Is listen, we're at the end of the interview now, and we've discussed so much information, and yet we've barely scratched the surface. There's still so much left to be discovered here in the line with Paul Volman. We just finished discussing his fantastic book, Still Standing, A Personal Journey to Find the Heart of God and to Restore Mine. Available for purchase through Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, directly through the publishing company, AuthorReputationPress.com. But remember, head directly to his personal site to gather everything that Paul has in store. And that's StillStandingMinistries.com. Paul, this has been... Such an honor, man. Truly mean that. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today, People of Distinction. Well, thank you very much for having me. This has been a pleasure. <laughs>